I'm Amanda, and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Welcome to today's episode. I have a fantastic guest. She reached out to me a few weeks ago, and um, I'm like really excited to talk to her. Her name's Jessie. She is here to chat with us today about her adventures in quilting. So welcome, Jessie. Thank you. It's so nice to so nice to be with you digitally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being here. So, okay. So tell me all the things. I want to know everything, how you got into quilting. Um, what yeah, like what even started you in quilting? Um, well, that's a that's I think it's a meandering question. I don't feel like it's ever you know, I, I just decided I wanted to do this. And then we went to the store. No, <laughs> yeah, no, right. <laughs> never, never the case. Um, no. but I was, um, growing up, I was homeschooled in Tennessee. Um, so that kind of gives you the freedom to kind of, um, do your own thing, kind of figure out what you like, don't like all that sort of stuff. And then like really hone in on those skills. Um, my so all that to say my great grandmother um lived in North Carolina so she lived in the mountains and um had no running water and still had an outhouse so um yeah no it's the wildest thing (laughs) um but she had a quilt a quilt frame that um my uncles my great uncles had hung from the ceiling um and it was lowered down so that she could work on a quilt during the day. And then it would be raised up at night so that she could, they could use like their family room as like, you know, like a multi-purpose room. So my grandfather grew up that way. Um, and I, we had gone up to visit, we like made like a pilgrimage, uh, Mm -hmm. once a year to go visit her. And I, expressed an interest in wanting to know what that was about, how she did it. Um, and she was just a real, real quiet lady. Um, and, um, didn't say a whole lot, but was able to show me just how she did her stuff. So then Mm -hmm. came back, um, found a little quilting class with the homeschool group and it kind of, kind of went from it from there. Um, and then it just kind of was always one of those things. I, I did it in the background. Um, mm-hmm. Like it would just like a little handicraft, you know, like if you're on in, in the car or whatever, I actually did not own a sewing machine and did not want anything to do with it <laughs> until <laughs> probably like five or six years ago. Um, so oh. I did, I know I did everything by hand, which I kind of, kind of feel ugly I, I feel like I was ugly about it you know and like whenever you're southern and you say I was ugly about it it means like you were just nasty and rude about it so <laughs> um but I feel like I was real ugly like towards people that were oh you machine <laughs> you know Ooh. I would yeah. never do that and now here I'm like oh <laughs> yeah um but yeah all that to say I just it was just always something that I just kind of always had like one or two projects going on. Um, and now it's just kind of, um, there's always something in the works, whether it's, um, for a client for like a vintage project, um, or if it's like a, a memory quilt. Um, cause I have, a, I, I do a lot of those. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I just feel like, I feel like it's always been one of those things. It's just been really important to me. Um, yeah. and just a, like a creative outlet, you know, yeah. whenever yeah. you know you just get so busy doing all the things you know mm-hmm. and yeah. it's amazing what 10 15 minutes can do of the thing yeah. of the thing that you feel like that that's what you're called to do or that's what your heart wants you to do you know yeah because yeah. I love my family but laundry just doesn't fill the gap you know <laughs> <laughs> definitely does not now washing those dishes just doesn't doesn't like fill me with joy so (laughs) (laughs) what I can't imagine why I know I probably need to take a pill or something like (laughs) (laughs) like is there something to make me want to do house chores because right yeah I'm I'm gonna gonna need need that I'm gonna need a lot of that so (laughs) strong prescription yeah and it's not caffeine because I 
intake a lot of caffeine and it doesn't help. It just yeah, makes for other sure. Stuff. For sure. <laughs> it just makes me vibrate while I do the things and that doesn't yeah. help. <laughs> so no, kind of makes it worse. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's just well, a mess. That's so cool that, yeah, that's so cool that you like grew up around cold thing. I was homeschooled too until high school. So I get that. Like we got to do a lot of, you know, exploring hands-on stuff just because we were home and we could go out in the backyard and my mom would take us to do stuff. So. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And I, um, I grew up with my mom having like the ability to sew stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. and I, I love her dearly, but she didn't like to do it. Um, Mm -hmm. so it was one of those things like, Hey, can you show me how to do this, this, and this, you know, and it wasn't, (laughs) it wasn't. So I grew up with her having like the ability to, Um, but it wasn't anything that was just like a massive part. Um, you know, it was more like garment stuff. Um, but not, not to excess if it was like, Hey, I want a Halloween costume, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Right. I can't, I can't find it in the stores. So let me see if I can make it out of a pillowcase type thing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Like in necessary or necessity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was just. I understand. I I don't understand garment sewing. Um, and I admire anybody that can do it. So yeah. Um, yeah, it just blows my little mind. (laughs) Yeah, me too. (laughs) Me too. Like the very boxy, like random things I've attempted. I'm like, I hate this. (laughs) I I like watch my mom whip stuff out and I'm like, how the hell? Cause she can just do it. I'm like, what? But she's done so much of it and she grew up you know, learning that kind of stuff. Right. Like she didn't even start quilting until like a couple of years before I did. And she, obviously she knew how to like assemble something, but um, she was more of like, you know, everything else sewing. But. Right. Well, and, um, you know, I'm sure that our moms are close to the same age. Then it was cheaper to make your own stuff. Mm-hmm. Now it's definitely not, you know, no. like nowhere near. And I think that's, I think that's what intimidates me is that, I, I, you know, you have to have like a certain kind of thread and then you have to have all like the things that I've looked into doing. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I can just, I'm, it sounds just so consumerish, but I can just go buy this for way cheaper. And then I'm yeah. not going to get super stressed out, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm trying think, to make a skirt. Yeah. There's merit to making some things, I guess, but like, yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, uh, quilts feel practical I mean it's not like I think now because of how things are you can just order stuff online too so if you can't find it in your town if you're in a little town in Kentucky like right (laughs) you just go on Amazon and get right your front step so yeah for sure for sure there's that but and I think you know I'm not necessarily consumerist to not want to handcraft your own things all the time (laughs) like right right a lot of that was born out of necessity for a long time and now we don't have that right there's other ways to like cut down on that I guess and like be more mindful of the consumption but you don't have to make everything right well (laughs) and, and to that end um you know I think that's what fascinates me about quilts um in general is that you know historically obviously women were doing it um I mean, we, with, you know, with the exception of, you know, a few men in there, but yeah. they were doing it around their household responsibilities. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and this was before washing machines and dishwashers and all the things right. that um, make are supposed to make our lives easier. You know, these women cut this stuff out most of the time with scissors, you know, and they would just like keep it in their aprons and work on it just a little bit mm-hmm. at a time. Um, and the fascinating thing to me is because my family was, is from the mountains um, in Tennessee and then in North Carolina as well, but they, they made it, they did it because they had to, they didn't mm-hmm. do it because they, you know, they wanted to, but they made it beautiful um, right. for the most part, you know, like they just, they just did it. There, there wasn't a yeah. pattern. And, you know, if I just do something, if I just do something without a pattern, I'm like, Oh, yeah. checkerboard. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I, I am so smart. <laughs> yeah. 
right? You know, I see some of these vintage quilts and I'm like, my goodness, especially like the little hexes and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, that was hand done, you know, that was, you know, yeah. by the light, by the light of a fire or, you know, an oil lamp mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but that's, what's fascinating to me about quilts is, and quilting is that historically they were pieced in the mm-hmm. summer and then you quilted them in the winter. Um, so it like, it's like firewood, <laughs> it warms yeah. you both ways, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. I just think that's so neat how they would, how they knew, or, I mean, you know, of course they knew because they don't, they didn't have all the conveniences that we have. And that's, that, that, is, that stuff just fascinates me. Um, I want to keep that kind of stuff alive, um, yeah. to be able to honor their, the, you know, the people that came before us, the legacies. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and their hard work so <laughs> yeah no for sure and I think like that's like the cool thing about modern quilting because it's like okay we know where we came from and now look what we can create with what we have but also like vintage quilts and like the the tried and true you know designs and and patterns from you know way back when like those are kind of I think I feel like those are coming back into play a lot more like the classic blocks, the classic kind of structure of a vintage quilt is, is coming back more and people are wanting that look more. And I think that's, it's kind of cool, like to see the mix of like, Oh, we can actually still do this and make it look contemporary, but lean back into that like historical piece of it. Exactly. Exactly. And just, you know, like whenever like some of your past guests have said, you know, like if they're make if somebody's made, if I'm making a quilt for a wedding gift or a baby quilt or mm-hmm. anniversary, whatever, I want it to be used. You know, I don't, right. I don't want you to put this on the wall and I don't want you to never use it. Like, right. I'm doing all this to be used. Um, and I don't want it to, you know, I don't want it to just sit and be something pretty. Of course, you know, if you want to do that, it's totally fine. That's it's yours. Once you, once I give it to right. you. Um, but it, there's just so much to be said for just using something, um, mm-hmm. the way it was intended to do. So I think yeah. that's, I think that's fascinating, um, to see how different people, how different people make them, you know, or put them on the wall or it's just yeah. neat to see everybody's cause I'm nosy. I want to see what, every, what everybody does with their houses, you know? <laughs> so I know. Well, it's funny too. Cause like, you know, I have a display wall, so I like rotate them out. But once they come off the wall, they just go on the couch or like in the stash. That's so like I have like a bunch rolled up in the living room, but they're accessible because I want people using them. And so we always have like two or three out all the time, like being used. And that's not counting beds and, you know, everywhere else in the house. But even here, like I'm at my parents' house again. Um, but I mean, this is a stack of quilts that we're selling right behind me. This, like, we've got these quilts on the wall. I'm going to turn this so you can see. Yeah. Like, this is one my mom just made. And there's a couple more. Like, we just, we switched those out too. She's got quilt ladders everywhere. And we're just constantly, like, rotating quilts around. But they get used. Like, we all come over and we all snuggle in a quilt. Or the grandbabies are here and they grab quilts. They have their favorites. They're like, this one's mine. This one's mine. Like, <laughs> And it's just, it's so fun to, like, watch watch them be used and like watch them be loved and know that like they're going to have those memories that they get to carry it on. And like, maybe one day they'll get to have that quilt as their own and, and pass exactly. it on to their future kids. You know, it's like, yes. you just never know, yes. but it's so cool. And seeing vintage quilts, it's like getting to know that there's so many memories in that thing that. Exactly. Like, yeah. Well, there was, there was a, um, a client and she had just seen, um, just, you know, just Facebook, a uh, website, whatever. I'm not sure. It was something along those lines. Hey, and she yeah. just messaged, I've got this quilt and my mama made it. She was almost blind. Uh, by mm-hmm. the time she made it, can you repair it? Of course. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I, I love that because I hope whenever I'm gone, um, obviously they're not, the quilts are not going to last forever, but I want, I, I want someone else to do that, you know, mm-hmm. to take that. Um, and one of my, of course I love making 
I love making the the quilts out of the t-shirts and the flannels and the jeans, all of that. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, I feel like that's separate than taking like an actual vintage piece um, yeah. that's been in someone's cedar chest or linen closet or whatever, and mm-hmm. making that functional. Um, and there was, yeah. I, I did a, a quilt, two, two, two quilts for the same lady. And it was just the coolest thing because she had just had them her grandmother's been dead 40 years. They've never been oh used. They're just, what? they were just in, they were beautiful. The colors were beautiful. They were just bright and jewel tones and just wonderful. Mm-hmm. And you take that quilt top that for whatever reason, the woman or the quilter wasn't able to finish. And you get to turn it into something that actually like, you know, you can snuggle with, you can watch a movie with Mm -hmm. the grandbabies can play with it. You know, like it's just, it's, I don't know. It just, it, it, it fills me with hope. Um, that, cause I know, I know I'll leave quilt tops not done. (laughs) I mean, let's just be real. Yeah. I mean, I might, I might have like 40 right now that need to be done, you know, (laughs) so just counting. (laughs) (laughs) Totally not a big deal. They look yeah. so good stacked up. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so, but yeah, I just, I feel like that's just like a super um, important part for me is like to just um, continue the legacy. Um, and and the lady was just so grateful and, um, and it, I didn't do it for that. I just, I did it because it made, it made, it fulfilled, it fulfilled a quilter's you know what you all I, I don't make the quilt tops just to put them in a pile <laughs> you know? right yeah. yeah yeah that's and I think being able to because we've done that for a few clients as well just like the, you know my grandma or my great grandma made this quilt top I just want it finished so we can use it because it's tucked away and we want it we want it like we want the right quilt. so we've finished you know and some of them are like a wedding ring quilt but it was hand pieced and we were like oh, okay had to quilt it super dense and we're like we're so sorry but this is the only way that this is going to stay together and they're like we don't care we just want it usable you know right exactly because it's it, it's half the job you know like mm-hmm. and not that not that piecing is is half the job but I mean really it is yeah um you know like you you take something that was just basically just a unusable something and turn it into something that can be used and treasured, hopefully, you know, for many years to come. So yeah. I think that's, I think that's a neat part. Um, yeah. Of what, what we're able to do as quilters um, is mm-hmm. finishing, finishing what other people started. So, and then, you know, obviously yeah. weren't able to complete for whatever reason. So. Right. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that's kind of like, okay, we'll, we'll help you carry this this legacy for your family and like give you something to keep holding on to of that person and so yeah I like I love when we get those kinds of projects because even though they're scary because I'm like I don't want to ruin your quilt like I know it's already falling apart but like I don't want to ruin it even worse but people just want to be able to use it they don't care if it's perfect they don't care if it looks exactly you know the patches aren't exactly the same or whatever they just want to be able to use it and not be afraid that they're going to continue you know wrecking it <laughs> right right yeah because there is there is something to be said for um you know the vintage fabrics you know they're they're not made um you know like ours are now so right. you know they they do get threadbare more easily I feel like so yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's just neat I just think it's neat um yeah. how all that kind of stuff works So when you're repairing quilts, like what do you, I guess, what's your process with that? Like, how do you assess like what to do or, you know, I mean, we've only ever done some slight repairs, but it kind of scares me. So I'm interested to like know how you go about it. Yeah. um, Well, a lot of it is, of course, you're not, I'm not going to repair it for, to be like put in a a museum or something, you know, like obviously that's not that kind of repair. This is like a functional repair. Um, so like the one that I have over here, um, her, the binding, the binding has just come off on the side. Um, she wants that to be fixed. Um, 
So I, I plan like the bindings just like, just kind of like gone. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's already attached like mm-hmm. back here. So, um, I would just try to make it as functional as possible. Um, because she specifically said, <coughs> excuse me, she specifically said, I don't care what it looks like. Um, I just want it fixed so that it doesn't get worse. So I think that's number one is obviously having communication with, with the person who has the quilt. Do, do you want me, you know, if it's got a very large hole in the middle, do you want me to patch that? Um, you know, and of course you can turn the edges under and then sew around it. Or do you want me to just sew around the hole so it doesn't get any bigger? You know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's all up to them and what they decide. Um, that they want to do with it. Cause this is obviously theirs. Um, yeah. and, and not mine. Um, but a lot of it, the majority of it is just making sure that what they want is done. Um, and then a lot of, a lot of what, um, I do, which I'm sure is the same with you and your mom is, um, like sending pictures throughout the process, like, does this look okay for you? Is this what you were thinking before I sew this together? You know, or yeah, X, Y, and Z. Does this, Mm -hmm. does this look okay? Um, but yeah, that's that just making something, um, it's, it's, it's a two-step process, either making it not get any worse (laughs) or fixing what has fallen, um, or Mm -hmm. come apart or whatever the case may be. Um, and sometimes they have the the vintage um, fabric that can be used from another quilt or whatever um, that they had, which I've had that happen. But um, hmm. but the, yeah, I mean that's um, that's the majority of trying to figure out what they want. Um, cause I'll just tell them, I'll just tell any, any client, I'll tell any, anybody that I'm doing any work for, you know, I, you, you tell me, you tell me what you want me to do. Um, because this is yours, you know, this is not right. mine. Um, and sure, I want yeah. them to be satisfied because, you know, they're, they're paying me to do something. So, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, it's a, it's a twofold process, just kind of, um, just really just making sure somebody's happy with it, you know? Yeah. As, as, as much as they can be. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know my friend, she actually was kind of one of the first quilts that we like actually repaired like a vintage quilt. It was her great grandma's. I think she wasn't sure. I think it was her great grandma who had made it. And it was like these hand embroidered wreaths that were, um, well, you know, like circles of little flowers, like embroidered in them by hand and then it was all put together but it was like the backing was falling apart the binding was coming off there was a corner we made a we embroidered a patch with her great grandma's name on it to kind of fill in that corner and so that was kind of the first one we did and you know rebacked it with something that she likes and and requilted it down because it was you know hand quilted we were just like oh my god so we had to take all that out and like redo everything but now it's a quilt that she and her, her family can use. She, when I've gone over there, she's had it out on the sofa. Cause she's like, yeah, I snuggle with it all the time. I'm like, <laughs> like, <laughs> so I just think sometimes like that was like, okay, we can, this is easy. Redo the back, whatever we can, we can take out the hand stitching. That's easy. But it's the ones that people are like, oh, here's this quilt. And it's literally falling apart at the seams. And we're like, I don't know what to do with this. You know, it's like, or yeah. what we could say is their salvage. It's like, okay, what do we do with that then? You know, I don't know. It's well, and I think at that at that point, can I make you a pillow? Yeah, I right? mean, like, and, you and really like not. I mean, the, you know, if you hand me literal rags, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, so I could I could make you a nice throw pillow, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and, and so, so many people are just, they're just grateful in general, um, that you want to, want to take that, take that process on. Um, cause you know, it's, it's not one of those things they're teaching 
teaching at the high school or anything. So <laughs> right. I know. Ooh. I just like I think about that because I'm like, God, this is like sewing in general is just such a good skill to have because whatever button pops up your shirt or you need to fix a hole in a pillowcase or you know just anything really it's like I'm glad like my husband learned how in the military because he had to sew buttons and stuff back on his own uniform and I'm just like oh thank god I don't have to like sew his buttons on for him (laughs) yeah but yeah just that simple task it's like I don't think my kids could if I was like here put your button back on I don't think they would know what to do maybe my older one because he's in the military so he probably had to learn how to like sew his buttons on or whatever but I don't know I don't really know but yeah I, I, 100% I wish it was I wish it was so <laughs> you know pushed hard because I think these like manual skills of being able to take care of yourself and your things is probably just as important as reading and writing and math and all those things so yeah, a hundred, a hundred percent. Just being, um, my husband makes fun of me because he's always says that, um, I have zombie apocalypse proof skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, cause you know, I could, if it, you know, if, if the crap hits the fan, uh, yeah. you can always, uh, barter for sewing, sewing skills. And I'm like, but you don't understand the things that I want to sew or things that are, are not going to need, you know, people aren't going to need quilts if the zombie apocalypse happens, you know, but I uh, I mean, they're going to need to stay warm somehow. Yeah. Right. Well, we got the warmth covered, you know, I'm sure like at your house, we, we have the rotation. (laughs) So yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be right. Yeah. It's a zombie (laughs) proof skill. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think in that instance, it's like out of necessity, right? Just like in the olden days they had to figure out how to make clothing and I'm obviously like it goes back long clothing making goes back forever and ever and ever but I think when you're just like out there you know especially in the early times like pioneering it and just having to make because you literally can't just go to the store for anything you just have to make what you can out of what you've got and right so it can be done it's just like do I really want to use my quilting fabric for that? No. <laughs> yeah, right. Just saving it. You just never know whenever you'll need it. <laughs> I know. My husband always jokes. He's like, well, just make minky, minky underwear. It'll be fine. I'm like, oh, no, that's gross. <laughs> oh, talk about would sweaty. Tickle. Yeah. Tickle. Be I wouldn't worry about tickle. tickle and sweat. <laughs> yeah, that too. I mean, all of it just sounds oh. uncomfortable, but... I don't anyway. think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I mean, he's got, I'm like, we'll be fine between the two of us. He can like woodwork and do fires and I can quilt or sew stuff. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. That's so funny though. Cause like we joke about that too. Like yeah. hey, in the apocalypse, like what are we going to do? But like, yeah. So all the things I'll sew us a parachute so we can like get away from stuff if we're like trapped on top of a building you can just like jump off we'll use the parachute it'll be fine I'll sew us hammocks I'll sew us like (laughs) yeah yeah I can do all the things but just don't ask me to hem your pants so because I I love it whenever like you you meet somebody or you know like you're chatting at a at a new like get together or whatever and what do you do and um, what do you do for a hobby or what do you do for, cause this is just like a little, a, a, a side business for me. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, what do you do? Yada, yada. And, oh, I sew, I make quilts. Oh, you sew. And I'm like, no, I will not fix your pants. Yeah. No, like don't bef- get bef- any ideas <laughs> before you, before you even say something, I will not hit <laughs> your pants. You know, <laughs> don't I even don't do please don't. Cause I it know. is pitiful <laughs> if you want me like, I don't uh, <laughs> I don't do that kind of sewing no I'm not that sewer so <laughs> I make like, rectangles that's my mom yeah right rectangles, rectangles is what I, <laughs> like, I can make a no, rectangle thank you. that's it no mm-hmm. that's it <laughs> variations of rectangles and squares right anything maybe, outside of that maybe a flying geese or two you know <laughs> <laughs> for feeling squirrely yeah that yeah I'd have to be extra squirrely I made too many in too short of a period of time and I'm just like if I have to make another flying geese anytime in the next three or four months I might have something to say about it but 
You never know. I might not do something super severe, but I'll be annoyed. <laughs> I will be irritated. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's okay. This is like, it kills me because my mom wanted me to sew for so long. And then I just was like too anxious to do it. So I just never learned, like I never really learned as a kid. Like I kind of had ideas because she did show me stuff, but, and I'm cross stitch and do other crafty stuff, but. Well, um, to piggyback off of that, it, it, mm-hmm. if somebody is trying to get you interested in doing something, mm-hmm. you're probably not going to want to do it, you know, yeah. or yeah. I always say under duress, you know, like the, <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. So, Oh, everybody made it to, you know, made it to church or made it to the store. And I'm like, yeah, under duress, they're not happy about yeah. it. Nobody's happy about being here, yeah. you know? Um, right. But you know, it was probably one of those things um, that, yeah. yeah, I learned how to, she showed me, but I wasn't super okay with it (laughs) like yeah or you know you know like you can tell like if a kid is halfway paying attention Mm -hmm. you know like yeah sure yeah she showed me how to do it yeah (laughs) yeah like I guess I know how well and I think oh I knew what I was gonna say found it (laughs) (laughs) thank you um so all the time of sewing and she started quilting before me and she's made like all these different kinds of crazy quilts right like she just makes that pattern like most of these quilts that we have around that she's made she's just like found scraps or whatever whipped up well she went to her friend's cabin for the weekend last weekend and they did like a little their own little like quilting and sewing retreat she made her very first flying geese at that like two weekends ago and I was like are you serious right now Michelle she was like I know what I can't I was like oh my gosh how have you of all people only made just now a flying geese (laughs) block like I don't know it's oh fine. well and of course her quilt is gorgeous I was like oh, okay okay mm, it's yeah fine. thanks for showing she watched me. me struggle <laughs> with the <laughs> six thousand I made before her she's like what yeah. not to do right mm. yeah a hundred percent and I think <laughs> I don't the older I the older I get and I sound just so ugh, I hate it when I say stuff like this but the older I get <laughs> the older I get like I understand why my parents never learned how to like program their VCR or why the microwave timer was never changed or yada, yada, because there's just some stuff that I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not learning how to do that. That I'm just not doing it. (laughs) Yeah. No. Um, and like every time, yeah, well, like there's a meme that says, you know, you're an adult whenever your favorite grocery store get switched around and it, it annoys you but <laughs> just like every time there's a, an up, an update or something I'm like oh man what do I have to learn how to do now <laughs> you know? I know oh and there's um, there's only so long out only so many times that I can change my password you know <laughs> only so oh many my times God, I know I've only got about yeah. two more passwords left in me so <laughs> I'm like this noggin yeah. is not gonna remember it's no. fine no, uh, no. Like, uh-uh. Writing them down. Like, no. Okay. Don't write it down. Okay. Don't keep it in another spot. Right. Phone, okay. Like what? How am I supposed to remember all this then? Yeah. Right. And, yeah, for sure. And make sure you don't use it anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Well, if I don't use it anywhere else, I'm not going to remember. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, How am I supposed to have 1400 separate passwords for everything? Yeah. I, I need a book. Yeah. I, I, I need a spiral bound notebook to keep up with. Yeah, like. <laughs> writing them all oh, down I know and I think that's too like with new you know new quilting ideas I'm like do we have to try everything you know because I I do like to branch out every once in a while and like right now I'm selling something with curves it's a gift so I can't talk about it fully it'll get posted in my socials as soon as it's gifted but curves and it's like so cute but I'm like I don't like this <laughs> like why am I doing this to myself I'm like oh it's for someone else it's fine but I just think like kind of to your point of being like snooty about or what would you say ugly being ugly Ugly. being being ugly oh she's just being ugly (laughs) (laughs) yeah I kind of like it Um, (laughs) I think people get kind of ugly about if you don't do all the things in quilting like 
you know, I've come across them before, like, oh, you've never tried, you know, whatever quilting technique or, oh, you've never made one of these kinds of quilts. I'm like, no, it doesn't look fun. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and I don't and, like it. And to, you know, to go back to like teaching somebody a skill that they don't want to learn or, mm -hmm. you know, trying to reinforce something with a kid or some, even like a coworker, or, you know, somebody else that you just interact with. Um, it, if I don't enjoy it, I don't want to do it. Um, right. you know, and of course there's things you don't enjoy in your everyday life, you know, of course, but it, right. I, I just like, I, I don't, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. The reversible, like freezer paper stuff, all the like paper piecing. Yeah. My brain does not work like that. Like I admire and I love looking at other people's mm -hmm. processes of doing that. But you start talking, talking about sewing on paper and then ripping it off and dead. And, and my poor little brain just goes, nope. <laughs> and just, <Yeah>. whew. <laughs> my brain's like, mm -mm, nope, mm -mm, nope. Like, <laughs> so, sorry, I don't do that. Yeah, yeah, that, mm, yeah. you know, so, but mm. yeah, there's, but there's so much. And I, I feel like, that you're right about, well, you've never done such and such. And I'm like, well, no, <laughs> you know, yeah. that looks, looks and awful. It looks like a Chinese torture technique, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't learn how to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, you're like, no, thanks. No, I know, like, I there's like so. such gorgeous quilts and they're beautiful. And I yeah, just like you said, I love to look at them, but do I want to attempt it? No. Like the big thing around here, I don't know if it's for you guys, but Judy Niemeyer patterns. I have never heard about those. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm about to educate <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you're about to they tell me. They are these massive, they're beautiful. They are so gorgeous. But like Dinner Plate Dahlia is one of them. There's like a newer one that just came out, not just, but that came out a little while ago. It's called Coral Reef. And they're like, they're all paper pieced. And there are these intricate designs with like these teeny tiny triangles and curves and like all this stuff. And when you buy a pattern, the patterns are like 45 to like $150. It just depends on like what you're getting, but they're like inches thick because it comes with all the papers you need to pe paper piece the whole thing. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I and, say and, no. Well, and, and that is perfectly fine. Like, you want to do that? I will admire mm -hmm. you. I will, mm -hmm. I will rah, rah, go for you, you know, like, mm -hmm. but I cannot yeah. help you. I, and I don't know, like I, I know. And, and I'm sorry, but like you are even just talking about like a stack of paper that goes with a <laughs> pattern. And I'm like, you know, like yeah. you, you can kind of, I kind of get itchy and I'm like, mm -hmm. that, that sounds oh, yeah. like a lot, but I'm sure that they are absolutely beautiful. Oh, um, they are gorgeous, but bleh, I don't, I don't even want, and they're like, oh, you can just try this little one. Like, you know, the ladies at the quilt shop, they're always trying to convince me to do stuff. I'm like, no, um, but, and it's from a good place, you know, they're like, oh, they're so fun. I'm like, for you, but that sounds, that spells anxiety for me. Like, I'm not touching it because I want to, like you were saying, I want to enjoy what I'm doing. So if I don't find joy in the process, and there's always parts that I'm like, this sucks. But if I'm like, okay, I really like the part before, and I know I'm getting to a part that I love, or I'm really liking what's coming from this crappy part, <clears throat> I can overall experience joy with the process. But if yeah. I'm looking, just looking at something, and I want to run away, I'm like, I'm not really going to go there. Like, yeah, why would I do yeah. that to myself? For sure. Yeah, if I'm already nauseous, or my stomach hurts <laughs> just looking at it, then I'm like, nope, that's gonna that's gonna be good. <laughs> I'm like, I got the sharp sweat. So I can't do it. Oh, uh, I, I need a pill. Like, I don't know what kind of yeah. pill I need. But Something that does not oh, look fun. Yeah. <laughs> but there, you know, yeah. once anyway, once again, like I will admire you. I knock it out. Go, go, girl. Go team. Go quilter. But mm -mm, yeah. no, that. <laughs> sounds awful <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah I do I admire it because it is a lot of work and there's a ton of pieces and you have to you know I and everybody says oh the instructions are you know they're really well written and everything's really clearly labeled I'm like I'm sure that's the case 
but I'm just going to stick to what I like because, you know, and I try new things here and there and I end up either if I like it, I pull it into my repertoire and then I'll reference it if I need an idea. But if I don't like it and if I don't, if it doesn't look fun, I'm not going to, I'm not going to branch into it and spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on fabric and supplies and whatever else to do something that I just does not even appeal to me in the first place. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But you know, I, I would love, I'll, I'll be nosy and I'll look, I'll look at your, mm-hmm. I'll look at how you did it. And yeah. Wow. That looks, that looks like a lot. Congratulations. You know, yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. I'll be your if, cheerleader. Yeah. Right. But you know, if, if I do something that is labor intensive, I want it, <laughs> I want it, I want the labor to show you know, mm-hmm. like, I don't want it to be, I, I don't understand whenever, well, I just hand dyed this fabric from a dandelion that I picked last summer <laughs> and it, and I crushed it. And then it stayed in the garage for six months. And then I dyed this wool. And then I, and I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What? <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. You, you know, you can Ooh. go to the Hobby Lobby and get that, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. They sell yeah. that every day. <laughs> right. And I think that's like, that's like such a good illustration though of the, the vast like depth and breadth of like what crafting can be. And some people really find joy in that process of like choosing natural things to press into fabric and create something with that. Good for you. I like, you know, I like art gallery, I like Tula, I like Ruby Star, I like, you know, like art, anything, not anything, but you know, a lot of things, right? right. Paper. I've got a whole long list of fabric sources I'll go to before I'm going to dye something with dandelions. Right. But, you know, yeah. teach their own. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, I, if, if I go through the, if I go to the work, I, I want it to show that I went to the work. Well, I did right. 12, I did 1200 hours of stitching on that. Okay. It, yeah. okay. Now, like, why? <laughs> okay. It, yeah. <laughs> great. Uh, looks great. But, you know, if, if you show that to me versus, you know, a, a machine quilted something mm-hmm. or another. Okay, great. Um, and yeah. and this, is coming, this is coming from somebody that I, I do hand quilt. I enjoy hand quilting, um, but I literally will do one project a year. Um, because it just sits in the hoop in the living room. If I have time, if I'm not exhausted, um, or, you know, we're just sitting watching a program, which is a TV show in the South. (laughs) (laughs) Let's watch our program. Um, but, uh, (laughs) and most of the time it's, um, most of the time, if you say program, it's, you know, like the price is right or something, but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but with my children, it's Netflix. So, but oh, you know, okay. if, you're, if you're just doing something like that, it's just, it's just a hand project to have, or if it's like a super yeah. special, um, super special baby quilt, um, mm-hmm. then I'll hand do that. But, um, but up and up until like, you know, five, six years ago, I, I was very ugly about, um, things not being done you know, if, the, if it wasn't fully handmade, it wasn't actually handmade, but you know, now older and wiser, you know, <laughs> right. You're like, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you remember whenever I said, yeah, I was an idiot. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. but you know, and there's, it's, I think it's just, once again, it's who, whatever your preference is, you know, some people like to churn out five quilts a month, um, and, and, you know, and great. Um, yeah. And then some people there's, there's, um, you know, that I've seen and read, uh, that just do one a year. Um, and there's no, there's nothing right or wrong about either way of either one of those. Um, right. I just think it's fascinating how each one of us is different. Mm-hmm. Um, and how, you know, we learn differently and then we implement all that stuff differently as well too. But yeah, I don't know, but it's just different. You know, some stuff I'm just yeah. like, wow, okay, don't be judgmental, don't, but don't be judgmental, <laughs> right? I'm judging you, but I'm not judging. Yeah, you. I'm not judging you. I'm not saying I would do that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be over here with the cheerleading sign. <laughs> so. Yeah, right. 
I think it's it's fun like getting to know kind of everybody not everybody but like just different perspectives on quilting and like where it stands in in people's lives and um so and and I think it just keeps leaning into that idea of like don't yuck people's yums like don't tell me that you don't like my quilt because it's I mean we all have our judgments right we all have our kind of preferences but I think ultimately it's like if I'm gonna I'm not gonna judge your way of quilting if you don't judge my way like I'm not telling you that you have to make your quilts the way I make my quilts and and I don't want you unless I'm coming to you and saying like hey I need help with this thing because I can't figure it out don't tell me stuff like say good job I like what you made and be done like exactly yeah and and <clears throat> that that is unfortunately why um I just, I don't have like a guild that I'm a member of or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's just one of those things I've just never kind of felt like I belong um, Mm. with that because I kind of, not that like I'm like this rogue quilt bandit or anything, you know, (laughs) Uh, sorry, the cat jumped on the table. (laughs) Um, uh, But yeah, it's just, it's just different because you know, I, I do this part time, you know, I, I, you know, it's just, it's just different. Like there's just such a difference. Um, we do have a couple of quilt shops that are about 30 minutes away here. Um, but there, I just, I had, I kind of had like a, one of those experiences way, way young, um, at a quilt shop that I was just asking for some help with a quilt top and it just kind of ruined me for it, you know? (laughs) you know, yeah. and, and I, I don't know, I, the lady, of course, I want to think that the lady didn't intend for it to be ugly, but you know, you're sure you're starting out and you're just like, Oh man, this is, this is great. I'm doing such a good job. And, you know, I go in and, Oh, oh this is not done the right way. Do you see this right here? And then she's talking to another customer about what I didn't do the right way. And I could yeah. have, I could have died. The, the yeah. ground could, the ground could have swallowed me whole. So, yeah. and oh. I would have, uh, but you know, and, and I'm sure that it wasn't out of a place of like nastiness or anything, you know, but it was, well, you shouldn't have done it this way. Well, okay. Thanks. You know, <laughs> there's no, like, that's well, not what I asked you. <laughs> no, I, I just needed help. Like knowing what I do next, but, um, yeah, I think, I think that's just one of those things that, um, I try to be intentional you know, if somebody's asking me a question, um, or um, try to help with a machine or whatever, um, that, yeah, of course I'll help you, you know, cause I want, yeah, I want quilt, I want quilt buddies. So. <laughs> right. I know. And I think that's like, I know I've said it a million times and I always, I already said, I hate repeating myself, but this bears repeating because I think the more we share, the more we the more we talk to each other and understand each other's perspectives on quilting and the more we can hear each other, the easier it will get for people to come into quilting. And I think the more we break down that old stereotype of like quilters are old grumpy ladies, the more people will want to join in. And I think, you know, that's why I started this thing because I want to talk to people who aren't grumpy old ladies about quilting, who want to enjoy the process, who want to share the information that they've learned and, and share their joy. And like, yeah, it's like, we have to be, we have to be the voice for those, for those newer quilters to be like, it doesn't have to be like that. Come over here with us where you can be a part of this process and, you know, we'll help you learn in a way that makes sense to you. And like, I think that's, oh my gosh, a bug. Um, I think that's where, sorry, I think that's where like the future lies with quilting is it's not, it's not going to be, you know, maybe, yeah, some people might have had kind grandmas who showed them and, and walked them through the process and gave them a love for it. And some of us maybe didn't have that, but if we can be that voice, like inviting people in, then, then it kind of helps that 
that old stereotype fade away. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And, and that goes with anything, you know, not just quilting, Mm -hmm. you know, um, just, I feel like just, just being a nice person, um, and just doing the way, doing people the way that you would want to (laughs) the golden rule. (laughs) Right. Uh, you know, just, just being a, just being a nice person, just being decent. Um, Mm -hmm you know, just, just being kind. And there's, um, my day job is working, uh, with the public. So Mm -hmm. it's just, and people are just, some people are just nasty. Some people just want to have a bad day and, you know, I'm so sorry you feel that way. And then you just move on, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the same way with quilting, um, and learning a new skill. So, um, but, but Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, uh, it's just that thing that just, just completes me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, okay, yeah. this is something I can do that I love. I enjoy that other people love and enjoy and are going to be in my corner. And I think that's like the fun part is getting to share your final project and be like, look what I made. And everybody being like, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so cool. Can you make yeah. one for me? Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, I can't. No, one time only for myself. <laughs> this is Sorry. a once in a lifetime. Thanks. Um, which yeah. is yeah, like it was interesting because um I was listening to some of your other podcasts. Um, and I think like your husband had said something about uh great, can we sell it? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. It just it I don't want to. I don't want yeah. to because mm-hmm. <laughs> if I had to sell it. <laughs> right it wouldn't be fun anymore you know (laughs) so yeah uh, but you know like that's just that's the difference you know between yeah men and women but um Mm -hmm. I don't know it's just it's just fascinating that stuff like that so Mm -hmm. I don't know (laughs) yeah I know there's just like some things I'm willing to make for other people and some things I'm not and and I think that's all good like we gotta have those boundaries to say no I'm not gonna make that for you because it's a lot of work and I don't think you even understand how much that would cost me like you know I love you but not spending well yeah and you know I'm sure y'all see it you you and your mom but and you know not to not to be rude you know again but some some people will some will comment or like DM or send an email Mm -hmm. or whatever to the website, uh, to my website or Facebook. Hey, I'd like this quilt. Can you do it for 300? Can you do it for yada, yada? And, and not to be ugly, but you can go to Walmart and get that quilt for $50. It's not Mm -hmm. going to be a quilt. You and I both know it's going to be stamped or the fabric is going to be, you know, not literally pieced, but you know, if you're, if you're, putting that in like a seven-year-old's room he's not gonna he's not gonna understand how special that is then you're gonna get upset then you're gonna be well I spent so much money on this Mm -hmm. you know and 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 sometimes just um I think that's what a problem that I had uh towards the very beginning is I was only charging people for the materials Mm -hmm. um I was not charging for the time um Mm -hmm that it would take. And that is so important. Um, because yes, I, I do, I do this for fun. Like I do enjoy this, but I still have to pay, you know, I still have to pay myself and pay for electricity and you know, Mm -hmm. that all that sort of stuff, the stuff that y'all run into, I'm sure as well with, with quilting. (laughs) So, you know, it's just, it's hard whenever somebody message and you're just oh and you just know mm-hmm. <laughs> you you're can like, just tell mm-hmm. and then oh I just don't want to tell them how much <laughs> I know because then it feels like oh they, they're they gonna think I'm price gouging but like we literally had to revamp everything we were doing because we both you know we sat down we we're like we're not making any money like we're literally just charging enough like you said for the materials and that's not counting the fact that we're both working eight hours a day, at least on this business. Like that's not fair, you know? And once we started adjusting and and adding in our labor, you know, it weeds out the people who are just looking for a quick, you know, like, Oh, I want something handmade, but they don't really understand what they're asking for. 
which is fine. And maybe they'll find what they're looking for somewhere else. But, you know, I'm, it's not going to be me, not me. But uh, I think the people who are willing, like, yes, I'll pay it. I don't care. Like, they understand what they're asking. They understand what they're getting. And they know that what, what they're asking for from us is going to be something that they have for a very long time. And so I, we've gotten more comfortable with, with asking for what we think we're worth, you know, like this is our value and work-wise not wholly as a human being, but like, right. I mean, I think that's another podcast, quite frankly, right. A whole different wall of wax. I I got, I can't know. (laughs) I can't speak to somebody's worth. No, No. I'm not. But yeah, no, like that, that is so important. And it's just, it, it's that gross factor where mm-hmm. you you know like you, you know <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna send this number to this person and they're and they're gonna they're either they're gonna just like ghost me which you know obviously happens all the time which whatever mm-hmm. um yeah. or it's gonna be wow that's that's really high it is and, and i'm sorry but mm-hmm. i have i have costs um you know i'm yeah i'm I'm balling over here on a budget, you know, like, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, exactly. I, I, yeah. So, but, um, but, but like you said, you know, it's just, you, you get what you pay for. Um, mm-hmm. and I always, I'll always tell any, any client, you know, something happens to it. If it gets a hole, if mm-hmm. something starts to fall apart, bring it back, I'll fix mm-hmm. it. You know, yeah. because yeah. you know, crap happens all the time. Um, right. I mean, this, you can't do that at Walmart. You know? <laughs> no, no, you can't just like take back your threadbare quilt and be like, fix it. They're like, yeah. no, get yeah, out. Um, but buy a new, buy a new one, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. all six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's what uh, is so, uh, so different about um, making like mementos out of mm-hmm. s- things that people have left behind. Um, mm-hmm. Like where, whether it be their jeans, their flannel shirts, um, t-shirts, all of that. I, and for the longest time, I absolutely despised t-shirt quilts, hated them, hated, loathed them. I <laughs> loathe doing t-shirt quilts, but then I, like it changed my mindset whenever it was, this is, this is all that's left, um, mm-hmm. of somebody. Um, right. You know, and it's like, wow, that's, it's really hard to have a bad attitude about that. <laughs> right. I know. I still I don't know. like it. I, it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I don't, we get, I don't dread them. I don't dread them. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. They're, they can be tricky because it's like all different sizes and you have to try to figure out how to fit them together. And, and I think we get so many requests from people to make, bug um <laughs> to make <laughs> I do seriously it keeps like going across my eyeballs and I'm like uh, <laughs> trying so hard not to react but it's so hard when it's like right in my face anyway. well I can't <laughs> see it so if that makes okay. you feel any better <laughs> it just <laughs> makes me look like I'm so crazy it just lo- makes you look spastic it's totally fine <laughs> but I'm just wigging out over here uh <laughs> Uh, yeah oh t-shirt quilts okay but yeah we get a lot of people <laughs> we get a lot of people asking us for for that and a, and a lot of times it is it's like oh my you know my dad passed away or my grandma passed away or and so it's hard to say no to that and and knowing that now they're trying to take those clothing pieces that aren't going to get worn but they want to keep them and they don't want them stuffed away in a box it's like okay I we can do this and so many people are like, I won't, I won't do them. I won't make t-shirt quilts. And, and it's funny because of how many we've made and, and mostly my mom whips them out. Cause again, she's just got this brain that sees things and like, she can put stuff together so fast. I don't understand it. She's a wizard. It's fine. But she's like, Oh, they're so easy. Like they're one of the easiest things ever. She's like, I, she can make t-shirt quilts all day, every day, you know, and I'm getting better at it, but it's like, you know, if if you don't have the knack for it, but at the same time, we're both in that space of like, this is somebody's loved one, or like, this is a, a, such a cool thing that these people are going to have that they'll then get to pass on to their family. You know, it's like, 
I don't know. It's, I don't know. It seems like it's become like ultra popular all of a sudden. Well, and I, I think so. I, I definitely think it has. Um, but um, to, to that, to that end, um, that's where I feel like Pinterest does quilters a disservice. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with Pinterest, love Pinterest, sure, um, sure. love, love sharing ideas, but you know, you've got that one overachiever, you know, Gladys over here <laughs> that, you know, makes, makes the clothesline baby quilt. Uh-huh. And you're like, what? And, and and it looks like the the baby clothes are on the clothesline mm-hmm. drawn and I want yeah. this but I want it for two hundred dollars no zero <laughs> percent chance of that happening that's not gonna happen Gladys you know because I yeah no but but and um I, I have a family that I've that I'm working with now that has they've brought five they want five five mm. uh memory quilts but they want each one different. Um, so like okay. it's, it's a group of sisters and then like a, a mom, um, okay. that their dad passed away. And so like just bins and bins and bins, but it was so cool because they were able to talk beforehand, um, mm-hmm. about like, you know, not that this is their names, but okay. Sue wants blues. She wants to hang it on the wall. She mm-hmm. doesn't want jeans in it. She wants flannels. She would like a t-shirt, you know, that sort of thing. And, and sure. I like being able to do that. Um, mm-hmm. because, uh, my, my dad passed away at the end of January. Um, oh. and I have not been able to, I haven't been able to make anything from his stuff because it's different. Cause it's my dad. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, um, mm-hmm it's it's the stuff that I remember I don't have I don't have a relationship with these people you know that are like of course we're friendly they're friends all that right sure but it's not your dad (laughs) right exactly I don't remember this person wearing that you know Mm -hmm. and it's just wild it's wild to think you know what finites that we're here just for so for so little and you know just like we were talking earlier then that's just that's one of those things I would want somebody to do for me. Um, uh, you know, maybe once you're gone and just, it's just, it's Mm -hmm. just wild. It's the wildest thing that, uh, that you can take clothing and make something that's functional and that you're not just throwing it in the landfill, um, or taking it to goodwill or whatever the case may be. Um, right. Or having to actually try to figure out how to wear it as a piece of clothing. Cause even that is like, like when my grandma passed, I mean, it's been like five years, but five, six, I don't know. Anyway, it's been time, but right. I still struggle. Like I have a little box of some of the clothing items that my mom like set aside. She was like, I thought you might want these because it's like quintessential Grammy. And she had made a quilt for my grandpa for his birthday in January out of, you know, a bunch of her clothes because we hadn't touched anything for so long. Cause you know, grandpa's still living in the house. He doesn't want us to take anything out. There were things that he was like, get these things out of here. We're like, okay, we'll do it. But like, I still can't bring myself to go there. I still can't bring myself to like pull those clothing items out to see if I even want to wear them or do something with them. Like it just, it's hard. And Oh yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And um, there's a lady I've, I've done two t-shirt quilts for her and for whatever, uh, for her son, for her, for her son, Mm -hmm. um, a a daughter passed away whenever she was like eight or nine. And this was Mm -hmm. years and years and years and years ago. She's not, she, she wants me to do that, but she's not able. And I'm like, I'm here. Like whenever you, whenever you are ready, I'm here. I don't have any plans to go anywhere. Um, and I, I think that's, um, what I want clients or people that are looking for a quilt to be done, whether it's by me or somebody else that Mm -hmm. I, I respect all of this. Like this is Mm -hmm. not a flippant thing for me. Um, right. And this, this is like in, in my dad's case, he, he was cremated. So we don't have, you know, we, we have his, his tombstone, but we don't have any, there's not anything else tangible, you know, mm-hmm. that you can just be like, okay, this is, 
this is it, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. but I just think showing respect and showing, um, reverence and, mm-hmm. you know, that being sympathetic, just being like, wow, I am so sorry that you've had to do this. I'm so sorry, um, that this has happened. Yeah. Um, there was, there was one lady that, um, they were having, it would have been her and her husband. They were going to have their first great grandchild. He had oh. passed away from cancer. Um, and she wanted a Dutch boy and a Dutch girl pattern made from his dress shirts. So oh. she had that made and it, she just loved it and it was great. And, you know, we worked together to figure out how she wanted it, how she wanted it laid out. Cause she had something very specific in her mind. Um, and it was just, it was so nice to be able to do that. And of course I'm only yeah. grub about it, you know, and kind of like, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in the moment and you're like, Oh, okay. But then, you know, you step back and you're like, man, I really hope somebody does mm-hmm. that for my loved ones. Um, and yeah. just under, understanding, you know, that this is, this is somebody's legacy you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. hopefully, hopefully you can leave a, a good legacy, a leg, legacy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you say that. I don't know if you know that, <laughs> but, okay. you know, hopefully, hopefully you can leave a good enough legacy, you know, that people will, will want those memories of you, you know? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's such a cool way to stay connected to that person too. You know, it's like, I think eventually I'll want one, but right now it's still, still stings a little too much to. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, like, yeah, obviously everybody does grief differently, Mm -hmm. you know, different stages. And I, I don't have any, I, you know, I don't have any training or anything like that. And that that's one of those, that's, this is not the podcast for that. Right. But, uh, <laughs> the one. Yeah. Wrong one, but, um, I just, I, I like being able to being able to help, yeah. um, with closure and just help also just memorializing, you know, mm-hmm. um, that person. Cause it's so neat, like what you can do, you know, I, fussed about Pinterest, but it's so neat, like how you can look on Pinterest. Well, I've got all these work shirts from this gentleman because the area that we live is very rural. Um, Mm -hmm. so a lot of the, a lot, there's a lot of farms, farmers. Mm -hmm. So they would have those old work shirts where you've got the name on one side and the farm on the other side. And it was neat. I was able to make pillows, memory pillows for somebody. And it was just the coolest thing. You just sewed a little block um, mm-hmm. slipped the pillow in and then literally buttoned the shirt up. And it was just, I would have never thought to do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. So. And it's so simple, but it's like now that person, you know, it's like you can hug that person still in a way, you know, exactly. Yeah. Having their shirt be a pillow. And that's, yeah. yeah, I've seen those, I've seen those around and, and they're so cool. Like we've never made one, but yeah, like I've seen the concept and I'm like, oh, that's that's a cool way to do it too. Cause then you can just like have a little pill. You don't have to have a full quilt, you know, you can just do that, but that's right. super cool. And, and to like what you were saying about the sisters and the mom, you know, they were, they all wanted different quilts, but the, the dad stuff, um, we did, we did something like that too. My mom's friend, um, you know, she had us make a different quilt one each one different for the sisters and the mom and out of their dads. Um, he was an, uh, air force chaplain. Oh, okay. For, you know, his whole life. And so they had all of his old uniforms and so cut them up and use the pockets and the patches and all the different things. And, you know, each one got to be so unique and it was so cool. And that was kind of our, our first like toe into memory quilts and, and since then it's just blown. It's like within the last six months, I swear we've made like 20 because that's what people want. Right. And right. And I think it's so cool that now that concept is out there. It's like, maybe it's been there, but like it's now getting to the masses, like the greater population of people who maybe can't do it for themselves. And so they're seeking that out and it's like, okay, yes, this is awesome. Like, yeah, let's let's marry the, let's get people more aware of quilting and get people more aware of like this community, but also understand like 
we're going to take care of you because that's that's why we're quilting. We make quilts because we care. <laughs> like Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as a way, you know, to have it for, for future generations, hopefully. Um, mm-hmm. And just to honor, honor that person's legacy and that their, their memory, you know, um, um, and then, you know, some people that, that seems morbid to some people and that's okay. Like that's, sure. there's nothing wrong it's, with that. Um, yeah. you know, uh, or everyone, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I understand. Um, but I just, I like being able to, to help. Um, yeah. but I, I feel like, I feel like you're right. They have gotten like super, super popular. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and I just think too, like, just if you've collected t-shirts, you know, it's like, we just made, made some of, we actually made two different ones for a couple. So the, the wife, she sent her t-shirts and from all different concerts, like all these band t-shirts. And so there was enough, you know, because usually they've got like the list of the dates on the back. We made the front was all the fronts of the shirts and the backing was all the backs of the, the shirts because we were like, we can't throw this part away. Like that's, how you know when you went, you know? Right. Yeah. And she loved it so much. She's like, okay, I'm sending you all my husband's hard rock cafe t-shirts because now he wants a quilt. And so we made them a hard rock cafe t-shirt quilt. And you know, my mom was like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. Cause she's, she doesn't have that many, but you know, she's like, oh my gosh, I've got a bunch of t-shirts too, that I could do that with. And it's like one of those things where do you want to wear a hard rock cafe t-shirt every single day of the week for three weeks in a row? or do you want to have a cool quilt where you can use and see all of them all at once? And then you don't have to have those shirts tucked away or in your closet or, you know, so I like that idea too, of just like taking, I mean, shirts are practical, but if you're not going to wear all your band t-shirts all the time and you want to memorialize that part of, you know, your adventure in this life, then yeah, make a quilt. Like it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had it. I mean, functional and a memory you know mm-hmm. yeah two for and two for and <laughs> something cool that you could pass on because it's like oh I had this quilt made out of all these things I love these things and now it's getting passed around or you know someone else gets to have that piece of you that is you because it's it's the things that you chose that you love and so I don't know that's a lot of talking about t-shirt quilts but hey, it's just crazy it's okay. how much they've popped up like recent you know in just the recent past year like how crazy yeah. popular they've been yeah and I think it's what like some of your past guests have talked about you know it's it's not being like so well I have you know like I have these shirts mm-hmm. um you know I need a quilt so mm-hmm. you know why why do all this you know why why right. go why go and spend, you know, X amount of money on fabric whenever I could just have somebody make it, you know, or attempt to make it myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Yeah. I mean, and, and blanket, you know, so. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's lots of different ways to, to view it, but I think overall kind of, it's pretty popular and, you know, I, I hope that continues because I think, Again, it's a cool way to memorialize people in your life and do something practical with the things that they leave behind. So yeah, for sure, for sure, a hundred percent. And and yeah. gives you something to do, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some something to keep your hands busy. <laughs> so, do you have a project that you're working on for yourself that you're? I know you said you quote like one quote a year, but. Is that like all you do? Do you machine quilt other ones or? Yes. Um, a lot of times I will um, piece it by machine um, and then I will hand quilt it <clears throat> for myself. Um, there's one that um, Lo and Behold Stitchery did or Lo and Behold Stitch. I can't remember how you say it, but um, yeah. it's like this crazy line quilt and it's just, everywhere um Mm -hmm. so I piece that on the machine and that's what's in my quilting hoop um now and I just have I just have like a regular you know it it just looks like a ginormous embroidery hoop um Mm -hmm. I've got pearl cotton number eight 
which is the thickest that you can get. Um, yeah. and just doing like big stitches on that and it's just wonky and it looks weird, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. that's fun. I'm sorry. Um, I haven't keep coughing. I'm oh, it's okay. <laughs> allergic to everything but yeah so um I've got uh pearl cotton number uh eight for the red part and then for the white part I'm hand quilting it with purple um so it kind of makes you look at it and you kind of want to have a seizure so (laughs) that's a good time yeah yeah um and then I have a little project that I I bet I probably have been piecing it for maybe three or four years um piecing it by hand um it's just just a little like vintage um pattern it just looks like a churn dash Mm -hmm. um just piecing it by hand and this is literally just like a quilt for me um yeah I mean might get it done might not get it done you know (laughs) so yeah uh but yeah that's that's what um, I just kind of always have those in the background cause I, I don't do well, um, just sitting, um, mm-hmm. even if we're like sitting and visiting family, <laughs> Yeah, you know, like the temptation is always there to pick up your phone and, you know, see what such and such is doing or check my email yeah. or blah, blah, blah. And, um, if I have, if I have a little project that I can take with me, um, yeah. you know, it it yeah. just it makes me it makes me feel productive. So <laughs> right. Right. Instead of just like zoning out on your phone when you should be probably should be talking to family or paying attention right. to what's going on around you. Right. You yeah. I mean still do that. Yeah. Be more present, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cause I, I don't um my brain doesn't work for like cross stitch. Um uh I I cannot crochet and I cannot knit. I wish I could, one of those things I admire people that can do it, but, um, I just, I, I just can't do it. (laughs) I've tried several times. So, but, you know, just taking a little quilt project, especially like if we do a car trip or, um, like a family get together or whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be rude, you know, I'll take that with us. So, but yeah, Yeah. um, I, I use, I like to use vintage sheets um, thrift, go to thrift shops, Goodwill, um, that sort of thing is sometimes get them off eBay if they're not super, um, expensive. Um, yeah. I like to use vintage sheets for the backs of my quilts. Um, unless somebody like specifically doesn't want, um, a sheet because, you know, I mean, of course I wash them before, uh, sure. but <laughs> I just like, there you go. I don't know where this came uh, from. Yeah. Um, I'm not actually sure where this came from, but the stain <laughs> should come out, you know, <laughs> wash it we'll a few dozen fingers. times. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it doesn't get on the front of the quilt. So <laughs> you're probably fine. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't do that. Um, but yeah, I just like to use like vintage, um, sheets for stuff like that. And so the, the one that I'm hand quilting has like a, um, like a flannel, uh, sheet for a background and it's red and white so I feel like that's always going to be like my Christmas quilt yeah Um, it's probably been in the hoop for like three Christmases but you know hey who's counting (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah maybe when your kids are older I don't know I always say that I'm like I barely have kids in the house anymore and I still don't have time to do all the projects I want to do so yeah you know yeah that's how it always is right yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. I think I love that you're like staying true to your roots while trying to incorporate like maybe a little more modern techniques with the machine piecing, you know, got over your ugliness and <laughs> Yeah, I did. Got over that got over that heart ugliness, you know. But <laughs> but yeah, for sure. And I just um I just think it's important to, you know, like your husband with his like woodworking stuff. And Mm -hmm. I just think it's important to try to show um, people and like younger kids in general, you know, there has to, there have to be other skills, you know, other than uh, typing on the computer. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, No, but that's not great. That's still great, but (laughs) right. You know, like 
Yeah, like learn something practical that you can do with your hands. Because exactly, when, if technology is not there someday, like what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, you need a zombie per skill. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I got one kid through the military. Well, he's he's got like a year left in the military, but then the younger one, he'll he's he'll just be graduating high school. Uh, in the spring so we got to figure out some his photography skills aren't going to save him in the apocalypse so <laughs> he's a yeah. fantastic photographer and he has such an artistic eye and he loves music and he's like doing all these really cool artsy things or like do you let's okay that's cool that's cool <laughs> like I don't know he yeah. can run fast like that's a great thing <laughs> he's athletic he'll figure it out right hey so. I mean you know <laughs> totally that's totally it it's, yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. his niche. No. You found it. <laughs> yeah, found it. Got it. He's fine. No, totally okay. He can just be a, like a like a runner, you know, to different towns. <laughs> yeah, like he'll go <laughs> get the stuff. He'll deliver the messages. We'll <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> use him in his long legs. He, like the kid is so tall, it's crazy. But anyway, yeah, it's I love the practicality of it. And, and it's fun, like having something that you can do with your hands and, and give yourself kind of like a peaceful project, like a peaceful thing to kind of like zone out on. And, and, you know, if I'm pacing or doing something that's kind of simple or I do crochet sometimes, but, um, they're kind of mindless almost. So you can just like sit and reflect on things or just kind of think about life in general. And, and I kind of like that peacefulness of doing something, being productive while I'm also, you know, enjoying the thoughts about my life. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying that latest Netflix binge. Let's be real. You know? Yeah. So. I mean, there's that too. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of like a, it feels more productive than just watching the show. Right. Right. You're making yeah. something. I'm like, look For at this sure. hat I made. I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> don't know what we're going to do with it, but uh, I'll go add it to the pile. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like another crocheted scarf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wear, I wear them. That's why I make, I, I pick the art I like. I make the things I like because I know I'll wear them and use them. So it's fine. But yeah, I like it. I like the practical skills. Yeah. A hundred percent. It feels accomplishing too, or like I feel accomplished when I've made something and with my own hands. And I think it goes for more than just like quilting, but you know, we, we redid our, the downstairs of our house last summer and we did everything ourselves. And thankfully my hand, my hand, my husband is handy. Hey, hey, my, my, henna, henna. <laughs> my handsome husband is of handy course. <laughs> and he knows a lot of things but you know it was a learning curve we had to do plumbing we had to do carpentry we had to do floors we had to do painting I just you know and it's a lot of things and it's like I'm not gonna ask for help I'm gonna figure this out myself and I'm gonna do it like shying away from things I think as people we can tend to like be like oh I I couldn't ever do that well, only because you're telling yourself you can't, you know? And if it's a thing of like, I don't want to, that's different. You're acknowledging that you could, you just don't want to. And I think that's more realistic for a lot of the things that people are, I could never, like you could, you just don't want to. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, and, and, you know, I think that's <clears throat> such, such a skill to, <laughs> to be yeah. like, man, I don't want to do this, mm -hmm. but I'm an adult. And I have to, so. right. <laughs> right? There's those things too. Like, okay, I'll figure uh, out how to set my yeah. microwave clock. I'll figure uh, out how to. No, I refuse. Well, okay. <laughs> Maybe not that, but I refuse. you know. Nope, nope. I'm Things not doing like it. that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Look on the wall. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. You've got a watch. You've got a phone. I don't know. Find Why do you need the microwave? <laughs> yeah. Find a clock. Why are you looking at the microwave? One of those battles is like, you fight that or you just let it go and figure out a different way. Yeah. <laughs> Just refuse to learn. I, I like that. That's, that's where I'm yeah. at. <laughs> Draw a line right there. Not doing it. Yeah. That's it. I'm not doing <laughs> it. You can't make me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I have loved our chat. I 
have loved getting to know you and your perspective on quilting. And I mean, I love that you're keeping the old traditions alive and while helping people keep their, their family traditions alive too. And I think that's really special. So, yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. It's fun, fun to chat quilts and other yeah. things, you know, <laughs> yeah. and a few other things sprinkled in. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, lifey things, but Hey, well, thank you again for joining me. And, um, if people are, you know, out your way and looking for you, where can they find you online? Yeah. So I'm on, um, Southern chick quilts.com. So that's the website. And then Facebook is Southern. No wait. Yes, that's right. Wow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Uh, Facebook is Southern chick quilts as well. And then that's on Instagram too. Um, so that's, that's where you can find me. You can get a hold of me, you know, uh, all, yeah. all the things, any, any, any way, any questions or anything I can help with, hopefully yeah. get you pointed in the right direction, but thank you for having, having me on. It was, it was fun. It's fun to yeah. chat. Yeah, it was so fun. And we'll link everything in the show description. So if people are wanting to find you, they can do that. It's super easy. And yeah, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon sometime. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Thanks.